It's always good to hear a good message, you know, from God's word. You know, this, is, this really is the most important thing. It's great to have fun. I'm glad that we have friends. I'm glad we have family. We've got people here. It's very nice seeing the people who are able to make it out, and we appreciate you being here very much. So it's, it's, it's really encouraging when we've had people we've been praying for for so long and have had all these various problems and health issues and stuff to be able to make it out. It, it really is, is very joyful. And I know I, I'm, I'm sure other people are feeling the same way but it feels like we're more complete because we've been lacking for a long time. And I guess, you know, I'm just going to get into my sermon a little bit right now. We're going to read passage in a little bit, but um, it just makes sense the way everything's going right now. So, um, you know, 2017 has been pretty rough for us, just in general. There's been a lot of ups and downs. Overall, I think it's a great year. Overall, we still experience growth. Overall, we've, say, we've gotten more people, led more people to Christ than we have any other year as a church. Praise God for that. But we've also had lots of just illnesses and injuries and problems and people coming and going. And, you know, there's been all kinds of turmoil. There's been all kinds of problems in people's personal lives. And, you know, just, just pretty much everybody within our church has had one issue or another some even worse than others. Some have, have kept people out. We have, we have Brother Dwayne in here with us tonight. Thank God. I mean, when was the last time you've been able to make it out for a church service, brother? Long, I mean, it's, it, seven, eight months. seven or eight months. And, it's, and, and Brother Dwayne's not someone who's just like, well, I don't feel like going to church today. I'm just going to skip out. No, I mean, he's, he's a faithful guy. He loves the Lord. He loves coming to church. But he's been in the hospital literally for almost all that time. Hospital, care facility, you know, just fighting off these infections and is going through the problems. And, uh, and, and that's just one example. And, and I'm, I'm very thankful that he's here tonight. I'm thankful to see this, glad he's here tonight. And, and everybody, everybody here tonight, even those that, that aren't out with illnesses, I'm, I'm glad that everyone is here tonight. And I feel like we are being strengthened, that God is, is answering our prayers and he's going to bring us back to full strength. See, the church is a body. We are a body of believers. The church is not the pastor. The church is not any one person. The church is all of us. It's a congregation. We are a group of believers, and we have a common goal. The local church, we all ought to be unified in our faith. We ought to be unified in, in where we're going, in our direction, in our goals. And as I mentioned earlier during announcements, this church is a church that's dedicated to bringing the gospel to the lost. That is our main goal. That is our main mission. That is what we're here for. Now, there's lots of other things we need to learn along the way and, and stands that we're going to take for the word of God. Amen and amen, but the driving force and what's propelling this church going forward and, and, and kind of the main mission is to go out and get people saved. Go out preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we're all about. And in order to do that effectively, in order to reach the most people, in order to make the biggest impact so that people, as it was in the book of Acts, can say, you know, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. In order for that type of recognition, look, we're not looking to just get some fame or to be plastered up. So, you know, it's not about that. What we're trying to bring glory to is the Lord Jesus Christ and make the impact of a group of people who say, you know what? What the Bible says, that's what I believe. And I'm going to stand for every single last word of it. I'm not going to make excuse for the word of the Lord. You can mock, you can ridicule, but the Bible says what it says. It's been around a lot longer than me and you, and it's going to continue on forever. And this is what I believe, and this is what I stand on, and we've got a group of people that all believe the same thing, and we're zealous, and we're excited, and we're going to go out and do something for the Lord. And this is what we have coming up in 2018. And I don't know about you, but I am excited. I am excited. Let's leave 2017 back in 2017. All the problems, all the heartaches, all the, the, the whatever, everything that's gone wrong, let's press forward. Turn, if you would, to Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to go way out of order for my notes, and that's fine. Philippians chapter number 3. We're going to start reading in verse number 8. You can follow along, Philippians chapter number 3. 
Verse number eight. The Bible reads, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. The Apostle Paul is a great example of someone who's had not just a bad, you know, 2017, I know he was alive in 2017, but had, you know, he, he's had a long life of worthless stuff that he did. He says, you know, all this stuff that I spent my life for, that I lived for, being a Pharisee, I count it all as loss. But did he let that get him down? Did he say, well, oh man, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm already, you know, however old he was at the time. And, you know, I, I, what can I do for God now? I caused so much damage. What can I possibly do now? He didn't have that attitude. He had a, what can I possibly do for the Lord now that I'm saved attitude. And forget those, and look, we're going to keep reading. Let's keep reading here because I, I didn't even want to <laughs> stop where I was. Verse number nine, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of, Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He has the goal in mind. He's got the prize set for. He's saying, Look, I know what this life is all about. It's not about this world. It's about the world to come. I've got the mark. I've got my eyes set on the prize, and I'm going to keep pushing forward. Yeah, I made a lot of mistakes in my life. Yeah, I was following the wrong path. I was persecuting the, 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 the church of Christ as Apostle Paul. He said, I'm going to forget about those things. They don't matter anymore. It's done. You, you can't get back. Maybe you say, hey, we've got to redeem our time now because what's done is done. What you've done in the past is gone. It's over. Let's say 2017 was a complete failure for you. Maybe you were backslidden. Maybe you're getting into things you know you should. Whatever. Leave that behind you now. Decide now. Say, I'm going to redeem my time now because my life is but a vapor. Because we have a short time on here. I'm going to serve the Lord now. Let's get on fire now and do it. It doesn't matter what was done in the past. You can't change it. Let's not dwell on it. And after today, I'm not going to bring up anything. You know, I'm not getting into specifics anyways, but I'm not going to bring up the problems that we had in 2007 because it doesn't matter. We're through it. We're here. And whoever is going to make it through those hard times is going to make it through. And those who haven't, you know, I'm going to pray that they, they come back or whatever. But it is what it is. And you know what? This is the nature of church. People come, people go. Sometimes, you know, it's really sad. Sometimes people go real on fire and then they just end up just completely fizzling out and going away. And I mean, it happens. But we can't let that bring us all down. And what we, you know, I, I hope, you know, if there's anyone, and I don't even know specifically right now if there is anyone this year necessarily that's been like that, but it doesn't matter. We need to focus on the prize. Let's not focus on the failures, not to focus on the things that have been done wrong. Let's not focus on all the problems that we've had. Whatever problems you might, whatever problems you might have in your life right now, you have to deal with them, of course. We all have to deal with certain problems, but let's focus on getting those taken care of and moving forward and moving on and continuing and fighting the good fight. Turn, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 12. We can't allow the trials or persecutions or failures or whatever was going wrong in your life in 2017 to get you out of the fight or even tone down to, to, to continue to do that. We need to turn things up. We need to ramp it up. There's been lots of heartaches and hard, and hard problems and, and illnesses and things that that get you to the point to where, you know what, like I got to coast for a while. And there are times in our life where that may be necessary, okay? Where you have to say there's so much going on and so much turmoil and you've been attacked, just, you know, just, just crazy. And you have to get some things in order. Maybe you have to get some things in order in your household. Maybe you have to get some things in order, you know, 
at work or whatever. So there's certain things you just, yeah, I have to take care of this and you kind of fall back into a coast mode. That may be necessary from time to time, but do not be very, very careful not to let that become your new normal where you've taken a step back from serving God and then you start to backslide and you say, well, you know, I used to go to church three times a week, but I had all these problems and all these things came up and, and everything was upside down in my world. So I, I kind of scaled back to only attending church once a week. Hey, and you know what? Now I'm kind of used to this. Now it's just going to be the new normal. Even after the dust settles and everything's fine. Beware of that. We, we need, we need to, to reset every once in a while and reevaluate and just kind of look back at my life and say, what am I doing for God now? What have I done before? And what am I looking to do in the future? Am I heading on spiritually, like on an upward path of just continually trying to do better and do more? Or am I leveling off and you know what, starting to go down? Because when you try, I mentioned this this morning, when you try to just stay flat and level, it's always going to dip down. You're never going to be able to just maintain. You're either going up or down at any given point. You're either trying to push forward or you're falling back. That's just the way it is. You can't really tread water in the Christian life. We need to get our heads screwed on straight and get the goal in focus. Hebrews chapter 12, look at verse number 1 of Hebrews chapter 12. The Bible reads, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We are in a race. It's not a sprint. The Christian life is not a sprint. It's a race, though. It's a long race, and we need to be in for the long haul. And in order to be successful in this race, we need to lay aside every weight. Why? Because when you're running a race, you don't want to be carrying a bunch of luggage and a bunch of baggage, right? You want to get rid of that weight. You want to put that off the side because you can go a lot faster. It's not going to weigh you down as much. We need to lay aside our, whatever it is that, that's weighing you down. The problems or the sin or whatever it is that's just kind of adding baggage to your Christian race. You need to learn to lay that aside so that, because what's important is the race. Not all these distractions. Let's stay in the race. Lay aside the weight and the sin which does so easily beset. Right? It's easy to fall into sin. We need to be aware of that and not let that hold us back in our race or stumble and fall and trip and mess up our race. Let's try to stay forward. Let us run with patience. Okay, patience means you're not freaking out when something happens when someone adds a weight on your shoulders as you're running, okay? Patience is, we, we need patience to endure. We need patience to get through the difficult times and, and to not allow these problems that come our way because look, they're going to come. Whether it be persecutions from other people, whether it be problems within your own family, marriage, whatever. They're going to come, but keep in mind the goal and the focus, and the prize, and run with patience. Verse number two, looking unto Jesus. That's who we look to. That's our guide. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. So Jesus knew when he was on this earth, and he knew what he had to do, and he knew he was going to go and be crucified for us, and he knew what he was facing. It says he knew the joy that was set before him. Now, the joy wasn't going to come until he endured all the grief and the shame and everything else that he went through. And then came the joy. We're the same way. In this life, yea, all that live godly, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay? If you are going to live Christ-like, if you're going to be following Christ and doing what he wants you to do, you will be persecuted. You will be going through hard times. But the way that you endure and the way that you run that race patiently is by knowing that after all of this hardship, after these trials, after these persecutions, there's joy. 
in the end, it will all be worth it. It's worth the pain. I mean, think about it, even just from a worldly perspective of a real race, like a, like a, a running race, right? People that win those races train very hard. Every single day, they're training and training and training. And you know what? It hurts. And if they're not pushing themselves and hurting, they're not going to win the race. They have to physically push their bodies and push their bodies and push themselves and go a little bit more and go a little bit harder and build up that strength and build up that strength. So then when the race's time comes, boom, man, they're ready. And they can go and they can win that race. Similarly, in the Christian life, hey, we need to know that while we're, we're you know, it, it's not quite the same analogy of training and running race, we're in the race. We're here. We need to keep pushing forward, though, and pushing through the pain, pushing through the hard times with our mind focused on the end, on the goal, on the result. Because at the end, when we're standing before the judgment seat of Christ, that's when you're going to get your joy. That's when you're going to realize all the suffering and all the pain and everything I endured is more than well worth it. And we have to keep that in mind because we're, we have, we're humans, we have flesh that's going to make us think, I can't take this anymore, I just want to quit. And that is the worst thing that you can do. If you have to slow down a little bit, it's better to stay in the race and slow a little bit than it is to just quit. But keep your, always remember what the goal is, the prize, and press for that mark because that is, that is completely worth it. Look at verse number three here. He says, for consider him. Oh, wait, let's keep verse number two. I didn't even finish verse number two. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. This is the perspective we need to keep. When we look unto Jesus, look at what he went through. Look at the contradiction of sinners against himself. Jesus wasn't a sinner. We could easily say that whatever troubles or trials we have in our life is completely deserved based on our sin. Anybody here can say that. You know why I know that? Because God put a punishment of hell on our sins, which he's freed you from if your faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if that is his punishment for sin, then anything that you deal with that, I'll tell you right now, isn't as bad as hell, can easily be seen as just well-deserved on our own anyways. But you know what Jesus endured? He endured the suffering and the affliction without any of that sin because he was perfect. He was without sin. So he didn't deserve any of that. He didn't deserve the shame. He didn't deserve the scourgings. He didn't deserve the beatings. He didn't deserve to be nailed to a cross. He didn't deserve to descend into hell for three days and three nights. But he did it anyways because he loves us, thank God. But when we start to feel wearied or faint in our minds because of the problems that we're facing and the struggles and how hard the race is, remember Christ. Remember Christ who was here in the flesh. You could say, oh yeah, but he was God. Yeah, but he was a man as well. He felt what we feel. He knows what it's like to be tempted. He knows that he wasn't tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. Yet he still did it perfectly. This deserves a lot of respect. I mean, it should go without saying, yeah, let's respect our Savior. But really let that sink in. Yes, he, we believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. He was God. But don't forget that he was a man. Don't forget that he had struggles. Don't forget that he had experienced pain and he experienced turmoil and he experienced grief. He experienced sorrow. The Bible says he was a man of sorrows. I know there's times in your life when you get sad and maybe really sad. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't faint in your minds. 
Remember Jesus and what he went through. He's our example. He's who we need to follow. Let's keep that in mind going into 2018. Turn, if you would, please, to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. I'm going to close with this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to preach long tonight. Titus chapter 2. Last place you'll turn tonight. Titus chapter 2. Verse number 11. The Bible reads, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Look at this, verse 14 is what I want to focus on. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. Peculiar means strange, different, right? He wants a different people purified unto himself. Not people that look just like the rest of the world. Not like someone who can live through their life and no one even knows that they're a believer in Jesus Christ. He's purified unto himself a peculiar people, people who are a little bit different, people who believe the truth and are not ashamed to speak the truth. That's what he wants, zealous of good works. What does zealous mean? It means you're on fire. It means you're fur. It means you have a lot of zeal. It's like, man, this is what I want. This is what Christ wants. He wants people who are excited to serve him. He wants people who don't care about being peculiar, being a little bit different, but are willing to put their necks on the line, to put their work into it, and go out and do something for the Lord and be excited about it. It's not a drudgery. Look, going out and preaching the gospel, I almost want to say don't even come if you've got a really bad attitude and you just don't, oh, I don't even want to go out and do this anyways. I just feel like I have to do it. Then stay home. Christ wants people who are zealous of good works. He wants people going out that are happy about it, happy to share the good news. Let's go out and do it and have the right spirit about it. It's not some chore. It's an honor. It's an honor that Christ has committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation, that we are ambassadors for Christ. The Bible says we're ambassadors. We're representing Jesus Christ here. What an honor. Jesus Christ left. He says, okay, in my absence, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and reach people for me. If Jesus Christ approached you to your face and said that to you, you'd probably fall on your knees and say, yes, sir, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And you'd be thankful for it. And you'd view it as what, and then be like, why would you choose me? I'm not even that good of a person. What do you, how do you expect me to do this? But when we talk about it in the bulletins and we say, hey, we got soul winning time, we'll go out and preach the gospel. Yeah, I don't really want to do that. Let it sink in. Because Jesus isn't going to stand right in front of your face and do what I just said. He's already done it. He's already said it. It's in his word. And his words are for us. It's our job. And it's an honor. We ought to be happy. We ought to treat it as very important. We ought to look through his words and say, how can I become a better preacher? How can I know the gospel better? I want more people to be saved. Hey, Jesus has left this up to us to go out and preach the gospel. I want to be the best preacher I can. Let's do that in 2018. Let's get stirred up. Let's be excited. Let's get zealous. Amen. Amen. Word of Truth Baptist Church should be a church that people want to be a part of because it's exciting. Let's go out and do the work. We're not just going to sit on our rear. Hey, having fun is great, and we're going to have a lot more fun, you know, playing some games and having fellowship. Great, but you know what? That's not what I want to use to attract people to come to our church. It's not. You can do that anywhere. You can have a social club and play games. The reason why people should be excited to be a part of World Truth Baptist Church is because we're doing exciting things for the Lord. 
because we actually treat it seriously. We treat the Great Commission seriously. It's been committed unto us. And I love it. I love it. I thank, thank you, Lord. It's humbling and it's an honor and we should view it as such. I'm excited about 2018. Hopefully you can tell. Hopefully you're as excited as I am. We're going to do great things. Let's all strive together. Let's, work, let's come together in unity, strengthen one another, help one another to achieve our goals. Amen. Let's bow our eyes and have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your word. I thank you for this church, dear Lord. I thank you for blessing us and for all the prayers that you've answered along the way. God, we have prayer requests every week. We're praying for people and you really have come through on so many. It's hard to even remember them all, dear Lord. We love you. We thank you. We thank you for giving us a job, giving us a duty, giving us responsibilities, and entrusting us with, with so precious a gift to, to go out and, and to show other people that, that free gift of salvation, dear Lord. Help us to train. Help us to, to become strengthened, dear Lord. Help us to get through our problems and our issues and, and whatever's going on in our lives, dear Lord, that we can do even more to bring glory and honor unto the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen.